This is the Epax X1 resin printer. It's a $400 entry level resin printer that's aiming to compete with some of the other lower cost entry level resin printers. By adding a bunch of features and functionality, it really just user friendliness and i think that this is definitely a contender for those who maybe have a little bit more budget and want something a step up from some of the very cheapest resin printers that are available right now in 2019 but the real question is this printer right for you let's find out hi there i'm danny the 3d print dm welcome to 3d printed tabletop a channel where we cover all things 3d printing for your tabletop games so there are actually quite a few $200, $300 DLP, MSLA, however you want to call it, entry-level resin printers that are available right now, as I'm sure you've seen on YouTube. And the reason why this one is a little bit different is because this one has already gotten pretty popular within the Photon community as an alternative to the Photon. And it is also kind of becoming more well-known outside of it as well, too. Full disclosure, this printer was sent to me by Epax. By all means, uh, I'm reviewing this because my patrons have asked me for it. No money's exchanged hands. This is totally just my thoughts. First, let's talk about some of the specs. Got a very nice 3.5 inch color touch screen, handles very well. It's got a standard 2K screen. And when I say standard, it's because a lot of these entry level printers use a very similar 2K screen. Build volume is 115 by 65 by 155 same as the photon but spec wise the things that set the x1 apart the light source is more powerful it's a 40 watt 50 led light source instead of the 25 watt that for example the photon has this means it prints significantly faster prints usually end up printing like 40 percent faster on my x1 versus my photon which is really significant especially if you're like trying to print commercially and filling up your build plate every time and and two hours makes a difference that's very significant which is why i share that it has improved z accessibility but it has that because the carriage is sturdier and it's more robust basically they've done an upgrade that is very popular in the photon community and they've included it in this one already so that it's better and there's less chance of Z wobble. It also uses a different kind of FEP film. Uh, they specifically refer to it as a non FEP film that is imported from Japan. Supposedly allows for better adhesion uh, between the print and the film, easier detachment, but it's also more expensive. Just so you know, you can also use regular FEP. And just gonna say, I haven't used both. I, I can't really notice much of a difference with FEP film. I guess it's one of those things where, you know, I guess if you don't get any failures, then it's working. And I have had failures, but it's mostly related to supports and stuff, not the film. I can't say that this is a game changer for me, like some of the other things that I'll talk about a little bit later are. It's worked well for me. It's got built-in anti-aliasing support because the firmware is upgraded. And I can't say I need anti-aliasing as much because I print minis, but it is nice to have the firmware upgraded coming from the factory. Last but not least, it has a sanded build platform, which I honestly haven't noticed much of a difference with, but this is one of those things that's just like a dividing thing in the Photon community in particular. There's always more to the story than specs though. And I think that this is even more true with the X1. The real thing I noticed when I first received the Epax was the focus on the chassis and the design for usability and user friendliness. I feel like it took a lot of the problems that the community had with the Photon and made those improvements and bundled it into a ready, ready to go package from the factory. The first thing I wanna say is the leveling. Leveling is a real issue in the Photon community for people who are new and they solve that by having the build plate connect in a way and everything be steel milled and perfectly accurate so that you don't need to level. This comes leveled. It's literally as simple as just disconnecting this, installing it right on here and that's it. You're good to go, which is amazing. Honestly, that was probably one of my favorite things of this machine. The failures that I got on this machine weren't because of the level. And I, I know that because of that. It was either because of my settings or my support most of the time. And those are much easier to troubleshoot than like, could it be the bed level? And having to drain the vat and re-level it again. So this was a very big thing for me. Huge, especially if you're new. It's kind of like auto bed leveling for FDM printers. 
The other thing is this whole machine, it's steel. So listen to this. Nah, but for real, this is what it sounds like. <laughs> Many modern cheaper alternatives, they have all plastic. And that's a problem because if you're printing, you want as little window as possible, less chance of UV light entering, messing with your prints. And when the whole thing is plastic, there's more likelihood of that happening. Even some of the newer photons are plastic and it's not necessarily gonna hurt the printer, but it is just a lot nicer to have it be all steel and know that you've got a quality printer that's gonna last and it's not gonna break on you. I know this printer can survive a Florida hurricane and I'm a Florida man. Let me talk about this uh, carriage here. So the Z-axis rail and the fixed built platform, which is what I was talking about, are what allow it to not need to be leveled. And they're very sturdy. Compare this Epax Z-axis carriage to the Photon here on screen. And you can see it's got a lot more to it. The other thing I'll say about this is that when handling this build plate, I actually print flat on the bed a lot. And I'm not talking about like the support structures on the bed. I'm talking about putting the base of a miniature flat on the bed. And I do that. That's just my personal preference. A lot of people don't like it, have issues with it. But with the Photon, what you'll see is when I would try to put it on my table in order to be able to remove the build plate, because there's a ball joint here, when I remove with a scraper, it would mess with the level of the Photon bed, which was a problem. I never knew if I was messing it up or not. I would just have to get a failure and realize that my support structures were perfect. My, te my settings haven't changed, so my resin hasn't changed. What could it be? More than likely the level. And that was so frustrating for me to have that problem. With the Apex, I don't have that problem because of the way that this is built. I could, I could hit this all day, nothing's gonna happen to it. And that's really nice for me because I don't have to change my workflow. I can print how I like to print. You might not do that, it might not be anything for you, but if you do have any desire to print straight on the build plate ever, or you know you just wanna have an easier time removing prints and not have any, any fear of messing with the level, then this is a really nice thing. It's a really nice design consideration that I do know other printers have, but it's really nice to see it here in this case with the E-Packs. Take out my glove, have a little hee <laughs> hee. Last thing I wanna say about this printer is just, I think that this printer has been built very thoughtfully. I mentioned this, uh, this steel frame. So if you notice here, let's say I have my gloves on and I wanna remove it. I can, you know, I can do something like this and then come back around and not contaminate anything with the resin sticky fingers and all this other stuff. That is so nice. I cannot speak how nice that is after resin printing with the Photon for a year. And the way that this is here, I can go like this it's just so much nicer to not have to always be doing everything in this little space right here and having these this clearance like this. It's really nice and definitely not something you'll take for granted if you've printed on the Photon. If you haven't, it's you won't realize how nice it is until you have it a different way in my experience. So that's the technical stuff, the hardware. Let me show you some of these prints that I have here on my table. Some of them you've seen throughout different videos, so I'll try to kind of change it up and get a mixture so that you can see a variety of things that I've printed over the past few months and see the level of detail, the quality I've gotten, as well as talk about some of the challenges that I face and what I have to do to fix it. You can see I printed a variety of prints on this printer. The only issue I ever really encountered was this line that would appear every once in a while. I reached out via email to the EPAX team and they told me to tighten some of the screws on the Z-axis carriage and that's exactly what I did and I haven't had the issue since. Now does the EPAX print any better than say the Photon or the Mars? Well, I've only personally used the Photon up until this point and the Flying Bear Shine, but there's a reason there's no video and there won't be a video about that printer. And I can't say I've noticed a difference. When you look at the two prints, I can't really tell the difference. Even between resins, it's not that noticeable to me, but it does a really good job. And like I mentioned earlier, not needing to level, let me narrow down what the failures were a lot faster than with the Photon, which I've used before. And that was very, very helpful to my overall flow 
to, to getting these prints when I need them to print as quickly as possible. And after all of that, I've got to say, this has definitely been my favorite resin printing experience so far. It really does feel like Epax took the feedback from the Photon community, which is very active with mods, both hardware-wise and software-wise, and took everything that they suggested and made a better machine and offered a very reasonable price for it. And I applaud them for that, honestly. So I see this question all the time. What's a good printer that I can get that's like a step up from maybe a $200 to $250 resin printer? And I think that this is a good option. I think that the Epax X1 will kind of fill that void of people who want a little bit more budget and want a little bit more quality of life, but aren't willing to spend maybe $700, $1,000 on a printer. And I do absolutely recommend this printer for anybody who wants a starter resin printer. The fact that you don't have to level it alone is huge and probably worth the $100 alone. But a lot of the other things that make this printer easier to use are things that you won't even realize they're just nice and help your experience be a little more seamless. If you've got the increased budget, I definitely think that the X1 is worth considering once again for the last time. If you're interested in purchasing the Epax X1, I've got links to both the Amazon and Epax's official store down in the description below. Once again, thanks to the Epax team for sending this out to me for testing and for my awesome patrons who suggested it in the first place. Thanks to those patrons that I'm able to make these videos like you're watching today. If you want to support the channel, consider becoming a patron. Or if you still want to support the channel, but Patreon's not your style, consider picking up a late pledge to get some really, really, really cool printable minis, like a lot of the ones that you've seen in this video today. Links to those are down below as well. Do you have an Epex X1? Are you thinking of getting one? Let me know with a comment below and I'll see you there. Thanks again for watching. Happy printing and happy gaming.